Could this radio be the bargain buy? Could it do more than you imagined it could do? Could it do what you want it to do? Well, hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Before I start the main video, I stumbled across something yesterday um, on the internet, published by Wayne Burdock. Now, but Wayne is the co-founder of Alicraft, but he's published uh, an interesting little bit of text. It, effectively, it's perhaps suggesting that you need to reset your ham radio button. You know, some of us get a little bit lethargic. Perhaps we think, well, I don't know. I'm not really enjoying this hobby. I can't work the DX I wanted to, and uh, I've seen some of the antennas others have got, and I feel a bit depressed and. I can't afford a new transceiver, etc. Well, perhaps you need to reset your hand radio button because it's not all about the best, working the best DX, having the best transmitter, having the largest antenna. It's all about hand radio as a hobby and a challenge. And I've put below this video a link to Wayne's text. You might want to read through it. It's quite interesting, actually. And although it starts off talking about collecting stamps and collecting shells. There's a message there. So take a look at it and have a read. Now we're going to have a look at a simple dual band VHF transceiver. Some of us don't often go on VHF and just want to talk to locals, uh, join in the local club net or on the local repeater. And others, beginners, want a simple transceiver to get their feet wet, to experience a bit of ham radio and uh, likewise they want to be able to join in with the local club where they get their initial experience of chatting to fellow hams. More confidence uh, when you're chatting to guys that you know from the local club. So I know a lot of beginners want to get onto VHF and join in local club net and then spread their wings as they get a bit more experience. So we're looking at a cost effective transceiver Actually, it's incredibly good value. So let me just run through the basics of this Anytone transceiver. This is the Anytone AT778UV, a dual band mobile or base station transceiver. It's very compact, the dimensions are below, and as you can see, a major part of the upper part of the transceiver casing is actually the heat sink, necessary when you've got a compact transceiver like this. There are three output levels, 25 watts, 15 watts and 5 watts. On the back you can see the hardwired DC lead there. You've got an SO239 socket here. And you can see how this uh, heat sink extends over the back, so it's very good heat dissipation. And also on the back there's an extension speaker socket. On the DC cable you can see here we've got an inline fuse and the overall length is approximately 2.1 metres. The microphone supplied is the keypad type, so it gives you remote control of various functions of the radio. And the curly microphone cable is terminated in a modular plug. Also included in the package is a USB cable for updating the radio, and the other end is connected to the microphone modular socket. And finally included in the package is the mobile mounting bracket, which doubles as a desk stand. And as you can see, the loudspeaker is on the bottom of the casing. Coming back to the front, so on the top left here we've got the on-off power button, then we've got the microphone uh, modular socket, and then we've got this multi-function control, which apart from volume and uh, band or channel selection, has all sorts of other functions. Each function to be controlled by this master control is determined by these three buttons on this side, and these three buttons on this side, and each of those buttons has two function options. And the main function button top there gets you into the functions, gets you into all the program inside of the radio. And the radio has 200 alphanumeric channels. The channel steps and operational bandwidths can be selected from 25, 20 or 12.5 kilohertz. And there's built in CT, CSS and DTMF tones. There's also a 1750 tone burst option. Now if we go closer into the front panel, you'll see that we've got two frequencies. The larger frequency is the frequency that would be live for transmit, and the 
other frequency, the smaller one, is the secondary frequency. Both those frequencies can be monitored at the same time. And although I've got it set to 70 SEMs and 2 meters, you can actually have both frequencies, 2 meters, both frequencies, 70 SEMs. So you can actually monitor two frequencies on the same band. The buttons P1 to P6 are user programmable. As the radio comes, button P1 switches between A and B frequencies. Button P2 is the switch between VFO and memory channels. Button P3 enables you to open the squelch to check for weak signals. P4 is the Vox setting. P5 is the squelch setting. And P6 is the volume setting. And the setting for each of those buttons is determined by the multifunction control on the right. For example, if I press button P6 here, you'll see the volume control comes up and I can adjust the volume. If I press P5, I've got the squelch control. I can adjust the squelch control. A quick press on the function button changes the primary values of buttons P1 to 6 to their secondary functions. So you can see here, they change. Now you can see we've got a completely new set of functions. Uh, we can select power, we can adjust CT, CS tones, etc. As well as covering the 2 meter and 70 sems band, you can see it's got extended frequency coverage for receive. The handheld microphone seems to work uh, fine. You've got the uh, AB buttons there, so it's in the two frequencies. You've got the keypad there. You've got up down buttons on the uh, right hand side there. PTT is on the uh, left. You'll notice the grill on the front, which means that it can be used as a speaker microphone. And then if we look on the right hand side, you've got four buttons and those buttons can actually be programmed to do various functions. And I'll show you that uh, in the next uh, clip where we cover the menu system. Let's now have a look at the menu. I press the function button, hold it in for a couple of seconds. We've got the menu selection. And the first one is various functions of the radio. We go back, we go back to the next one, and these are channel functions, functions which are peculiar to the channel, the CTCS, etc. etc. Then we go down to the next menu, and this gives us the opportunity of changing these P1 to 6 buttons. And then finally we go down to the next menu, we can change some of the functions on the microphone, those four buttons on the right hand side of the microphone. And it's a very versatile menu system. For repeater operation, put the channel into the memory system where you can program the shift and the tone access and also set a power level to suit uh, your purposes. Golf through Oscar, Juliet Victor, testing access, listening. Golf through Oscar, Juliet Victor, testing access and uh, listening. The power output test on 2 meters, the radio is set to 5 watts and the full scale deflection is 5 watts on the meter. That works well. Next the radio is set to 15 watts and the full scale deflection is 20 watts on the meter. Again, that uh, works extremely well, about 18 watts coming out actually. The full power of this radio is 25 watts. I've set the meter so it's got a 200 watt full scale deflection and as you can see it's hitting 25 watts. So. The radio fully meets its spec, and I got exactly the same results on 70 SEMs. You know, I really enjoyed this little radio. I enjoyed playing about with it. I'm not sure playing is the right word, because it's actually quite a, a serious radio. I had a lot of fun with it, and it's a very capable radio. I mean, 25 watts out, 2 metres and 70 SEMs, and all the various features for under £100. And when I was asked to review this, my first thought was, hmm, well at that price it can't be a very serious radio. Is it going to be flimsy? Is it going to be sort of lightweight plastic or whatever? Well, it's certainly not plastic because this whole case basically is a heat sink and it works very well. And I think it's the sort of radio that if you're a newcomer into ham radio and you wanted to get started, 
this little radio might be the ideal job because it'll enable you to talk all, to all your local friends and local club members and so forth. And if you go out and about, you can keep in touch through repeaters, etc. It's also ideal for the guy who, perhaps like me, doesn't get on two meters very often, but when he does, he wants to have a chat with perhaps local guys. Perhaps you're moving to an area which you're not familiar with and you set it up for the local repeaters, you can keep in touch with all the locals. So it's got a lot of features. I must say that the menu system in this radio is really good. It's very, very easy to access. It's very easy to adjust. And it's got lots and lots of menu items that you can fiddle about with. I mean, it's got a Vox, for example. You can adjust the brightness of the display. You can even turn the display upside down. If you don't like the speaker underneath, you can have the speaker on top and turn the display up the other way. The only problem is, of course, all the legends on the front are upside down. So anyway, it's something that you might use. No, I thoroughly enjoyed this radio. I think it's uh, excellent value for money. It does more than what it says on the tin. I could live with this radio. Well, there we are. That's the Anytone AT. 778UV. Quite a nice little dual band radio. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for your support as ever. And also don't forget of course that we sell this particular radio and there's other radios from the same brand and other brands on our website. If you've got any questions don't be frightened to pick up the phone and speak to one of our guys. They'll be more than happy to help you and uh, that's what we're here for really. Not only to sell radios, but also to give you advice, because it's in our interest as well as your interest that you buy the right radio. And uh, we've been around for a long time. So have I. Anyway, thank you for your support. Keep in touch. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you, as usual, in the next video. Bye for now.